Well, hello, friends. It's Monday. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend. If your family is still with you, I pray you enjoy time with them. If not, I'm praying for you because I know oftentimes holidays can bring up a lot of great memories, but still memories that bring to you know bring you back the reality that your loved ones are no longer with you, and that's hard. But I pray that the Word of God was able to console you in that season. And I know by us getting in the Word of God today, it's going to continue to to guide you and bring you to a place of healing and. And I tell you, you know, this word today is going to be an unusual word because it's probably coming from the book that very few of us have ever read. Uh, it's the book of 2 John. It's one chapter. It's only one chapter long. Uh, just a few verses in that. And yet there's a truth presented here that is very pertinent to us in the current context of you know, the multimedia that we have available to us today, all the different teachers who are coming to our ear and to our attention through those multimedia formats. We really need to pay attention to what John's saying here. So turn with me to the book of 2 John. It's one little letter uh, right near the, the back of the New Testament. And I want us to read verses 7 through 11 together. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. They do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourself so that you don't lose what we have worked for, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who does not remain in Christ's teaching but goes beyond it does not have God. The one who remains in that teaching, this has this one has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and does not bring the teaching, this teaching, do not receive him in your home and do not greet him, for the one who greets him shares in his evil works. All right, so here we see John issuing a very stern warning. You you can almost sense his heightened awareness and sensitivity to the fact that there's already these antichrists who are going out through the churches portraying and proclaiming a message that might be in addition to or it might be you know missing key elements of the Christian gospel you know and it's fascinating because he starts off by talking about one essential component of our Christian faith is that Christ has indeed come in the flesh now some believe he's referencing a, a, a teaching that would show up in its full force in the second third century BC uh, AD excuse me that being Gnosticism uh, which really focused more in the spiritual, mystical realm, saying that Jesus himself was not a, a, a literal physical being, but he was a, a figment of sort. And John says nothing can be further from the truth. If you go back to the beginning of John, you know, that first John we looked at last week, you know, what we have seen, what we have touched, what we have heard, stressing the physical reality of who Jesus is. So now he's coming back here. He's saying, hey, anyone who teaches or does not confess, he says, that Jesus has come in the flesh, he is a deceiver, and he is the Antichrist. And, you know, and that was a, something that all the New Testament writers warned about. In fact, Paul, in, uh, you know, excuse me, Jesus, starting off with Jesus back in Matthew chapter 7, the Sermon on the Mount, he says, Be on your guard against false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. Ravaging, ravaging wolves. He says, the fruit is what's going to give them away. So their teaching is going to be pretty convincing. It would be their fruit. It would be how they live, their, their life. It does not resemble the life of Christ. That's how you're going to recognize them. And so here we have Jesus before his death and resurrection already warning his followers that wolves, you know, savage wolves are going to come. They're going to try their best to deceive you. They're going to do their best to destroy the church. And so here's John again reminding you know, the dear lady he, he referred to earlier, hey, many deceivers have gone out. You know, First of all, he says, watch that you don't lose what you have worked for. Now, the whole thing is there is this. Hey, be careful that you don't allow false teaching to infiltrate the church. And be careful that you don't allow um, things to come into your understanding of the gospel that are not consistent with God's word. I mean, after all, he says a little bit later, he says, anyone who does not remain in Christ's teaching but goes beyond that. So this is someone who's coming along saying, hey, I've, I found a, 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 I've got a fresh word. Hey, and it, that, that fresh word is not aligned with the word that God's already revealed. God's word is, is set. It's established. It, it's, 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 it's finished. It's done. You know, in fact, the book of Revelation said anybody who adds to this, God will add to them in judgment. And so somebody comes along and says, hey, I got a fresh word. And that word does not align with the word that we have for us in those 66 completed books, in that one book of 66 individual books, then we are not only to not receive that, we are to reject that. Basically what John is saying. But you got to know the word and be able to, in order to be able to identify what doesn't line up with what's there and not there. So he says, hey, anyone who goes beyond this does not have God. 
So he's saying, hey, anyone who seeks to add to our gospel, anyone who seek, claims to bring a new revelation, you know, the Spirit of God is not motivating that. On the contrary, the one who remains in that teaching, this one has both the Father and the Son. Now, I want to link that back with what he said earlier about not losing your reward. You know, that's not saying you'll lose your salvation. We know in John's gospel, Jesus says, no one can, if someone's in the Father's hand, no one can pluck them out. You know, Romans 8, last verse of Romans 8, nothing separates from the love of God in Christ. So clearly, John's not talking about losing our salvation. What he is talking about is how we will be rewarded in the degrees of the, the good that we did, the kingdom impact we made, and then the things that may have taken from the kingdom. You know, there, we will lose reward in that. Not that there'll be punishment for that, but there will be rewards lost in that. So John said, hey, be careful you don't lose your reward by misleading and then by allowing these um, the, these portrayers of, quote, quote mystery uh, into the church. And then he goes on to say this, the one who remains in that teaching, this one has both the father, who remains in our teaching, has both the Father and the Son. That's not to say that you can have one or the other. He's saying they're truly saved. These are those who are truly born again. But after all, Jesus says, the one who knows me knows the Father. So this is basically John's affirmation of their salvation. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, number one, don't receive them in your house, and number two, don't greet them. Now the word greet there is not just saying, hey, how you doing? You know, how's it going? That's not what he's saying. Uh, a greeting was oftentimes a way of demonstrating an approval of or an acceptance of. And so John says, number one, definitely don't bring them in your house. Don't even give any inclination that you're agreeing with what they're saying or that you accept what they're saying. He said, in fact, he says, if someone does this, then you're sharing in their evil. You're being a participant in what they're doing. And I'll go a step further. If we, ref if we refuse to confront such a one, if we, can, if we refuse to identify the heresy and, we're in, and you know, lead out in re rebuking that heresy, then that's just as good as accepting it. And, and that's true. It's honest, folks. That's true. So the Word of God must always be the benchmark. It must always be the litmus test. And the Spirit of God will confirm us in that, whether one's teaching in accordance with the Word of God or is bringing something that is not in any way associated with the Word and revelation of God. Now, I told you earlier this is important for us right now because of everything that's going on right now, especially in Israel, the purveyors of prophecy, end-time teaching, uh, especially among the Word of Faith movement, the, the charismatic movement, they are really latching on to all of this. And they're attaching a lot of meaning to almost every single action. They're saying, there it is, there it is. You know, but but we got to be careful with that. we got to be careful that we go back to the Word and we read that revelation within the context of when it was given, who gave it, you know, and who they were giving it to, you know, reading it according to how it was given and understanding it in that way as well. Not understanding it through our 22nd century, you know, our, our 21st century eyes, but understanding it through the lens of the original audience and making sure that it fits with God's perfect plan of redemption as he lined it out in Scripture, especially Matthew 24, 24 and 25. You know, and there's several other you know, revelation. But you got to be really careful right now, friends, because there's so many purveyors of prophecy, eschatology, and all these different things who are, who are coming in and saying, hey, this is it, this is it. No, no, no. The Word of God will tell us, and the Word of God will reveal to us, and we hold to that truth, as you must as well. And here's the truth. Jesus did indeed. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died, you know, having not been accused of anything. He died... He was buried and he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. There's the core of our doctrine of salvation. There it is right there. And for anyone to add to or to take from, then that is, according to John, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the teaching of heresy, the, the teaching of, of devils and demons. And Jude's going to talk a little bit about that as we're going to see that later on in the week. Well, we're starting the week off in the Word of God, which is a great thing. Let's stay true to that teaching. There are several more verses. Hey, read those verses. Be careful to, to really take time to, to, to make sure you understand those verses. Because it's all about getting into the Word so that the Word gets into us. And when the Word gets into us, we better understand God's intention for our life. We better understand God's commands. And then we're in a better position to be able to go out and live sent. 